Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Hawley, please state for the record, when an ectopic pregnancy ruptures, what are the chances that it can be carried to term? My, under my understanding is that when an ectopic pregnancy ruptures is a life-threatening condition, that's why the treatment for an ectopic pregnancy is Excuse not me. an abortion. I'm sorry, sorry, reclaiming my time here. Again, could you just answer the question, when an ectopic pregnancy ruptures, what are the chances that it can be safely carried to term? And, and you know what, just to make this even clearer, I'm looking for a number between zero to 100. Can you give me a, a percentage? Sure, I believe zero ectopic pregnancies, even those that do not rupture, have a chance of uh, uh, successfully being carried to term. That's why the treatment for them is not an abortion. Reclaiming my time. Uh, it seems that there is a deficit in your understanding of reproductive health. Uh, in fact, I want the record to reflect that according to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, treatment for ectopic pregnancy requires ending a non-viable pregnancy. Now, let's turn... That, with respect, ma'am, that's not an abortion. This is my time. You, I asked you the question, you answered, and I am now providing you with the accurate information from medical experts. My question was, when an ectopic pregnancy ruptures, what are the chances it can be safely carried to term? The answer is 0%. I answered that correctly, Further, when it comes to one's accurate understanding of reproductive health and abortion care with an ectopic pregnancy, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists says, quote, treatment for ectopic pregnancy requires ending a non-viable pregnancy, this is my time, end quote. That is so now I'm going to turn to the real experts that's not and an we'll, abortion because now it does I'm not have to the intent to end the life time, of a child. Reclaiming my time, I'm now going to turn over to the real experts. So, despite the active misinformation campaign that is endangering the lives of pregnant people, including much of the testimony heard here today, endangering the lives of pregnant people, their families, and entire communities, this hearing is an opportunity for quality public health education that prioritizes equity and justice in reproductive health care. Representative Shannon, I would like to ask you about medication abortion. Now, this is a topic that many are hearing about uh, for the first time uh, in the news. Since first being approved by the FDA more than 20 years ago, medication abortion is now the most common form of abortion health care. It is discreet, incredibly safe, and highly effective. In my home state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, nearly half of pregnancies are terminated by uh, medication abortion. Last year, Chairman Maloney and I led calls to improve access to the medication abortion drug, mifepristone, and end arbitrary and burdensome restrictions that experts agreed were medically unnecessary. And thankfully, the FDA revised its regulations so that patients can receive what many of us refer to as MIFI by mail. Uh, Representative Shannon, what does having access to medication abortion by mail mean for people in your state, particularly people of color? Yes, thank you. So as I mentioned before, most of our state, the resources are located in Atlanta. And so around the state, a lot of folks don't have access to providers. So being able to have access to medication abortion means that people can get um, access to care after they've made their decision, regardless of what zip code they live in. And we all know that forcing someone to carry a pregnancy, um, an unwanted pregnancy, leads to poor health outcomes. So having Thank access you. to medication abortion uh, is the right thing to do. Thank you. Ms. Lopez, based on your experience working to connect pregnant people in Texas with abortion care, would increased government support to expand abortion access, including medication abortion, benefit the clients that you work with? Absolutely, especially now that we've seen most clinics in Texas shutter, and especially because of HB2, which was passed in uh, 2013, Thank you. that shuttered the rest, over half the clinics in Texas. Thank you very much. And I think the point here is that um, pregnant people in multiple states have had emergency surgery delayed and their lives put at risk 
while lawyers and doctors debate care due to confusion caused by the Republicans and this far-right Supreme Court. This is a matter of life and death. Thank you.